Metal additive manufacturing shows a lot of promise for production, particularly in the medical industry. Hybrid machine tools which combine additive and subtractive manufacturing processes are being used to develop new medical implants. We spoke with Optimec and a professor from the University of Nebraska who's using their hybrid machine tools to create biodegradable metal implants. We have a new system, uh, the Lens 860. It's our second generation hybrid. Uh, it comes in four configurations, either an open atmosphere for traditional metals uh, with additive only, or you can get that with additive and subtractive. So you've got the lens de uh, laser deposition head for your additive, and then you have a 16 tool turret changer for the subtractive side. Uh, we also have that in a control atmosphere. So if you're working with reactive metals, like uh, titanium, aluminum, magnesium, uh, and you need an inert atmosphere, you can get an argon purge, and uh, that controlled atmosphere in either an additive only or additive and subtractive, which we call hybrid. So actually, Nebraska was the first adopter of these hybrid and reactive system capabilities that Optimac had. So we have the first generation one system that allows us to do hybrid additive manufacturing on the titanium, the aluminum, the magnesium. Um, and so one project that we're mostly focused on is gearing up to see what hybrid AM can do for biodegradable implants, biodegradable medical devices, and seeing it, how we can use the lens deposition technology coupled with surface treatment technology to print our own mechanical properties for something as cool as uh, biodegradable implants. To do hybrid additive manufacturing on a reactive material, usually if you're, if you're doing additive and subtractive and you're doing machining on your magnesium part, for example, uh, you have to worry about the chips becoming combustible. You have to worry about your powder becoming combustible. So you need the ability to have an inert environment through all the processing steps as opposed to printing and then pulling it out and then going back to the printer. Because what we do is not necessarily a process chain, but it's a cyclic process chain where we print and then we do painting, print, then do painting and print and do painting. And so in that particular case, we need a, uh, uh, an inert environment all the way through the processing stages for our implants. Lens is a very good process for a number of applications such as repair. Uh, we can scan a part and compare it to a CAD drawing and repair the part. Uh, coatings, whether it be say a wear resistant coating on the exterior surface or let's say a corrosion coating with an inner bore of a valve or a pipe, that type of application. Uh, some of the applications that, that Mike is doing as well. Um, this is also for remanufacturing or modification of parts. So uh, in particular, let's say you have an existing part and you want to add a part to it, uh, you could do some uh, machining down of the original part and then add on. We took, for instance, a, a stock bar uh, we machined it down to a rod and then we ended up printing a, a fitting on the end of it. So there's a, there's a number of combinations of abilities and applications that this system is really good for. Whenever you break a bone, you get either a titanium, a stainless steel, or a cobalt chromium implant. And we're talking about plates and screws and rods. And the problem is when you put these types of devices inside your body long term, they create kinds of all kinds of long-term complications. For example, like in my case, I have two screws in my elbow. And it's to a point where they're starting to hurt every time I do something like carry in a, a gallon of milk or unload clothes from the laundry machine. Of course, my wife doesn't believe me. Um, <laughs> but it is, it's one of these things where, in my particular case, I have a complication, so I need the implant in a second surgery to come out, or the orthopedic surgeon says, well, they've been in for six to eight weeks, let's pull them out. Um, it's kind of the standard operating procedure. Instead of having this whole second surgery, uh, let's have one that degrades and we use manufacturing, particularly hybrid additive manufacturing, to control how fast this degrades. So where this is really cool is, is that you can tailor the degradation rate to someone like in my case when I broke my elbow, I was 12 years old, you can have an implant that degrades very fast because I regenerated new bone tissue very fast, so it's going through the next growth spurt. Or if you have someone who's very old, 75-year-old female with osteoporosis, she doesn't regenerate new bone tissue as quickly, so she needs an implant that degrades slow. With hybrid additive manufacturing, we can do that. We can have an implant that degrades fast or slow, uh, and we achieve that just by changing how we manufacture it. With what we're doing with hybrid additive manufacturing, again, um, it doesn't mean necessarily just printing additive and subtractive. I mean, there's so much you can do 
with hybrid additive manufacturing and coupling it with forming processes, peening processes, rolling processes, layer by layer, that I think it's going to be a game changer on how we manufacture pretty much every critical component that you use from aerospace applications to automotive to medical devices. The one closest to my heart is with the biodegradable implants, but the same approach can be used across nearly every industry uh, to print a better part that's lighter, that performs better, that and has the degree of tunability that you just never had before with traditional manufacturing. I mean, additive really opens up the doors in terms of being able to print your own mechanical properties layer by layer or location by location or zone by zone that you've never had with traditional manufacturing. So that's one of the big advantages. So I see hybrid AM really exploding in the next couple of years and, and just because of the potential you have to do uh, print your own mechanical properties for any application.